Up next, we have uh, Yun Chao Liu from Berkeley, uh, who's going to talk about noise and the frontier of, of quantum supremacy. So please, Yun Chao, the floor is yours. Thanks, Daniel, for the introduction. And welcome to my talk. So the title of this talk is Noise and the Frontier of Quantum Supremacy. This is joint work with Adam Boland at UC Berkeley, Bill Feverman at University of Chicago, and Zeph Landau at UC Berkeley. And the archive version will be available this week. Okay, so the motivation of this talk comes from the quantum supremacy experiments, which are among the most exciting recent developments in the field of quantum computing. By now, we already have seen two claimed experimental demonstrations of quantum supremacy. One is the random circuit sampling experiment by Google using superconducting qubits. And the other is the boson sampling experiment by USTC using linear optics. These experiments aim to use these prototype quantum computers to solve a computational task that is hard for classical computers. However, the complexity of these tasks are still not fully understood and a gap still remains between theory and experiment. In this talk, I will show improved complexity theoretic evidence that these tasks are hard for classical computers. In previous work, some evidence of hardness for these quantum supremacy experiments were shown in a certain theoretical model. In particular, the computational tasks defined by quantum supremacy experiments can be understood as sampling from the output distribution of random quantum experiments. Here, the output distribution is denoted by the black curve, where x axis is output string and y axis is the probability. In previous work, they assume a theoretical model where the experiment can maintain high fidelity as system size scales. This is of course only possible with error correction being performed and therefore corresponds to an idealized setting, which we denote as the low noise regime as demonstrated by the blue curve. However, previous results cannot prove hardness of sampling even in this idealized setting due to the fact that they are not sufficiently robust to additive imprecision. Next, we will introduce our first result in the low noise setting where we significantly improve the robustness of prior hardness results. In the computational model of the low noise regime, the input is a random quantum circuit as shown on the left hand side. And the output are samples from the output distribution of the random quantum circuit as shown on the right hand side. The goal of hardness arguments in the low noise regime is to show that it is hard to sample from a distribution that is very close to the ideal output distribution of the random quantum circuit with, for example, 99% fidelity. To show evidence for hardness of sampling, the standard approach in previous work is to reduce to prove robust hardness results for computing the output probability. More specifically, the goal is to prove hardness of approximating the output probability of random quantum circuits or random linear optical networks 
to additive imprecision on the order of the average output probability. For example, in random circuit sampling, the goal is to prove sharp P hardness of computing the output probability with an additive error on the order of one over two to the n, where n is the number of qubits. Here, I use an arrow to show the progress towards the goal for the robustness. If we can reach the goal, we will prove hardness of sampling in the low noise regime. In previous works, as you can see on the arrow, they are only able to tolerate a tiny amount of additive imprecision. Our first result achieves an exponential improvement of the robustness and gets much closer to the goal, although a small gap remains to reach the goal. Here's our first result, which shows improved robustness in the low noise regime. First, for random circuit sampling in the general case with n qubits and m gates, previous results can only show a tiny amount of robustness with a large polynomial in the exponent. Here it is m cube. We improve this exponent to only m log m. For constant depth circuits, we can replace m with n. And in this case, our result is n log n in the exponent, which almost reaches the goal up to a log n factor in the exponent. For boson sampling, with n photons and n squared detectors, previous result looks similar with a large polynomial in the exponent. And we improve this to six n log n, where we hide some higher order terms for simplicity. And the goal in boson sampling is n log n. Note that for boson sampling, our result is actually tight up to a constant factor in the exponent. And this is why we explicitly calculated the constants. Interestingly, here we use essentially the same proof techniques for both problems. But our result for boson sampling is actually tighter. Now, recall that in the above idealized low noise regime. Our goal is to prove hardness of sampling from a distribution that is very close to the ideal distribution. However, in actual experiments, we observe fidelity that decreases exponentially as system size scales due to lack of error correction, which we called the high noise regime as denoted by the red curve. For example, in Google's random circuit sampling exp experiment, they observed that the output distribution of their experiments converges to uniform very quickly. And they reported only 0.2% fidelity for their largest scale experiment. In general, we still lack hardness evidence in this high noise setting with exponentially decreasing fidelity, where we only observe a tiny deviation away from uniform along the correct direction. To capture the noise behavior in experiments, here we define a new computational model in the high noise regime. The input is a random quantum circuit as well as a fixed noise model with constant noise rate as denoted by the blue dots on the left-hand side. 
And the goal is to sample from the exact output distribution of the noisy circuit. That is, we require that an algorithm that solves the sampling problem in the high noise regime needs to reproduce the quantum noise. This model is closer to the actual experiments in the sense that it reproduces the behavior of exponentially decreasing fidelity and convergence to uniform. It was also conjectured that the output distribution of noisy random quantum circuits converges to uniform with speed x minus epsilon m, where epsilon is the noise rate and m is the number of gates. This was consistent with simulations and experiment data. In this high noise setting, it is unclear if there is any hardness in these tiny signals that deviates from uniform. In this case, surprisingly, our result shows that even these exponentially small signals away from uniform are still hard to compute. Our result can be understood as partial evidence in support of Google's intractability claim. More specifically, we show that it is sharply hard to compute the output probability of noisy random quantum circuits within additive imprecision x minus O m log m, which has the same robustness as our low noise result. Notice that the robustness of our result here in the high noise setting, it's already very close to the convergence to uniform. In particular, this means that we cannot improve our high noise result much further. This is because our hardness result needs to rule out the uniform distribution, which is trivial to compute and already very close to the noisy distribution. Okay, so having introduced both of our results, next, we will give a brief overview of our proof techniques. In general, our proof follows a similar structure as previous work, where the main effort is to develop a worst to average case reduction as shown by the blue arrow. That is, assuming we have an algorithm for computing the output probability of random circuits. We would like to use it to construct an algorithm for computing the output probability of any circuit. We can do so because of the existing, the existence of polynomial structure in both quantum circuits as well as permanents. Therefore, as we know that the bottom task is hard, we conclude that the top task is hard as well. Here's the proof techniques of our first result. First, following previous work, we reduce the proof of hardness results for random quantum circuits and permanents to polynomial interpolation on noisy data points. Here in the figure, we have an unknown polynomial denoted by the black curve. And we would like to recover its value at x equals one from noisy data points at x close to zero, as shown by these red dots. Here, these red data points can either slightly deviate from the polynomial, or they can be arbitrarily wrong as represented by the three outliers. This problem is in general EO conditioned 
as the extrapolation error can grow quickly outside the data interval. In our proof, we develop a robust Burlikam Welsh argument over the reals that allows us to solve this problem. Our proof simplifies the previous arguments by only using standard results about polynomials. We can also tolerate more errors in the data as shown by these three outliers. And finally, we significantly reduce the extrapolation error as shown by the blue arrow at x equals one. Combining all these techniques gives us the improved results in the low noise setting. Okay, sorry, hours, before you move on, there's a, sorry, excuse me, before you move on, there's a question from the audience from William Kretschner. So uh, he is asking, to what extent is this result in tension with recent results suggesting that simulating constant depth random quantum circuits might be classically easy? That's a great question. And I will answer this in detail at the end of this talk. I have okay, some, thanks. I have some slides, yeah. Okay. Uh, go on, sorry. Yeah. So for our second result in the high noise setting, the key observation is that the linearity of noise channels preserves the polynomial structure. Therefore, the same worst to average case reduction techniques in the low noise setting also apply to the high noise setting. And the final missing piece here in the proof is the worst case hardness for noisy circuits. And following an argument developed by Fuji, we show that worst case hardness holds as long as the noise is below the error detection threshold. Therefore, our result in the high noise setting also holds under the same condition. Here's a high level summary of our results. First, we substantially improve the robustness of prior hardness results in the low noise setting. Although a small gap remains to show hardness of sampling. Second, we also give initial evidence of hardness with exponentially decreasing fidelity in the high noise setting. Next, we will show that our second result implies the optimality of our first result in a formal sense. And at the end of this talk, we will discuss this together with other barriers of improving these results further, including the barrier in the question about the simulation of low depth circuits. So the connection between our low noise and high noise results has some interesting implications. Recall that we have shown earlier that we cannot improve our high noise result much further because of the convergence to uniform. This implies a barrier to improving our low noise result as well. This is because our two results are proven using similar techniques as we just discussed. And if we can use this type of techniques to improve our low noise result, then we can also similarly improve our high noise result, which we know is limited. To conclude this talk, here we will list some of the existing barrier results in the low noise regime that prevents us from improving our results further in order to prove hardness of sampling. As we just discussed, our results can be understood as a noise barrier for improving the low noise result. 
where we argue that the proof technique must be sensitive to noise, which is different from our current proof. Another barrier was recently shown by Knapp et al., which we denote as the depth barrier. And please see talk on Friday for more details. They showed that random circuit sampling is classically similable for very noisy, uh, for very shallow depths to these circuits. Their result doesn't contradict our results in the low noise setting as shown on the bottom. But their result says that the proof technique for hardness of sampling must be sensitive to depths. Finally, we recall an early argument of Aronson and Archipov, who showed that polynomial interpolation techniques cannot prove hardness of sampling assuming anti-concentration. This argument works similarly for both random circuit sampling and boson sampling. And this is one of the reasons that we cannot match the same constant as the goal in our result in boson sampling. An interesting open question here is to study whether the noise and depth barriers also apply to boson sampling, which is unknown currently. Finally, we note that from this table, we see that the result for boson sampling is tighter and we currently also have less barriers. So therefore we conclude that boson sampling might be a promising direction to further improve these results. And that's all, thanks for your attention. And hopefully I have answered the question. Okay, thanks Yun Chao for the very nice talk. Uh, so Adam, was uh, already answering many questions during the talk and I don't think we have any open ones, but maybe you can also give your take in some of them. So uh, for instance, uh, are you optimistic about getting rid of that factor six in the exponent of boson sampling that was asked by Alex Delzel? Yeah, so I think it's clear that from this table, we can see that improving this constant, um, if we want to at the same constant as the goal, we would need to develop some new techniques. Yeah, okay, good. Um, so I think there are no further questions. Oh, there, just kidding. Um, so Raul Garcia Patron just asked, what do you mean uh, by the noise and depth barriers apply? Yeah, so I was just uh, referring to the fact that the noise and depth barriers was originally developed in the setting of random circuit sampling. And they haven't been formally extended to boson sampling. But it's interesting to see, it will be interesting to think if they can also apply to boson sampling. Okay, thanks. So if there are no further questions, then I uh, guess we'll take a four minute break and we'll continue then with the last talk of the session by Dante. Thanks a lot. <laughs>